What is up everybody and welcome back to the second day of the five days of color grading where I'm going to give you tips and tricks on how to get better at color grading and how to make better looking images. Today we're going to be talking about the infamous thing that everyone wants to know and that's how to get good skin tones. But we're going to take a little bit of a left turn and we're going to talk about a new technique that you can use to bring out your skin tones in your color grade. Let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and get started. So I have this simple node tree setup. I've converted my footage to Rec 709, which you can check out the first video if you want more details on that. And I've just messed with the exposure a little bit and the white balance just to get it neutral. But the nodes that we're going to be focusing on today is the look and the skin. Now what have I done here? Let me delete these and reset. So I've created a node, which you can press Alt S to do that and then I've right clicked and gone down to add node and made it a parallel node. Now DaVinci Resolve does a little flipsy thing to where the node below is actually the node on top and the node on top is actually the node below so this one is gonna be our skin and this one is gonna be our look. So let's just label those quickly. Okay, so with look, I'm just gonna do a basic grid. I'm just gonna push the gain into the warm orange tones, but I'm gonna make it a little bit heavy. So into something like this. So we can see that this guy's face is actually quite orange and we wanna bring back a little bit of that redness in the skin tones. Now normally what other people do is that they'll take the parallel node and they'll add a qualifier and they'll select this face and they'll start modifying from there. I do use this way sometimes, but there's also another way that might give you a little bit of a smoother look. So instead of going to the qualifier we're actually going to go down to the curves make sure that our skin node is selected and we're going to be using hue versus hue and hue versus sat as in saturation so we're first going to click on our hue versus sat and we're going to select this face now even though this footage is orangey red no matter what your footage looks like your selection should always show up in reddish orange it should always be reddish orange if you're selecting the person's face and it's blue it's green it's purple you've made the wrong selection so it should always be a reddish orange so we're going to drag out these points keeping them all straight and i'm just going to bring this a little bit into the orange and we're not going to do any modifications yet but now i'm going to do the same thing in hue versus hue so i'm going to make a selection on his face and we're gonna drag these out and drag them out this other way. And now we can start doing modifications. So I'm gonna go to hue versus saturation and see how this footage plays with my modifications. So I'm gonna bring up the saturation slightly and I'm gonna go to hue versus hue and I'm gonna start fiddling around to see where I can bring up those reds again in his face. So let's see if we drop it down. Okay, that's more green. Let's bring it up, oh see right there. So we can start raising it up and we see the red returning in his face. Now of course, this is a lot of red and that's why we also made a selection on the hue versus sat. So we can start bringing that down, bringing that down, making it a little bit better. I'm gonna bring these out, make widen them a little bit. We can see the red starting to recover in his face. Bring it down a little bit, we're on hue versus hue. And if we do a selection, even though it's slight, if we zoom in, look at the before, look at the after. Now it might be a little bit difficult to see, so let's just push it even more. Yuck, it looks gross, it looks super orange. Now let's activate it again, and now let's start to bring down the saturation in his face. I'm gonna start to bring down the saturation in his face lower that so we can get a little bit more of a dramatic look or a dramatic difference before and after so we're gonna go back to hue versus hue see how we can play with that bring that a little bit up then we're gonna go back and this is gonna be a little bit of a back and forth in between and we're starting to get those skin tones back in the place that we want them to be we can even go into our vector scopes and then we can look at this line this line is actually the skin tone line and your skin tone should be somewhere around there if you don't see this line click this icon right here and then click show skin tone indicator and so if we see that's off that's on and so we want our skin tones to align slightly with there so this he looks like he has a little bit of a tan so let's bring it down 
and so that's looking good and so this is the before and this is the after you see that we've brought back a little bit more reds we've desaturated it a little bit and the thing that I love so much about using this technique is that it keeps the consistency of the overall look throughout the image sometimes when you're using qualifiers it's a lot easy to make the skin look unnaturally different than the background or the surroundings while using this technique it's always going to be blended in with the surroundings so it's going to look a lot more cohesive and it's a lot more difficult to make your footage look unrealistically pink or unrealistically perfect skin tones let's just quickly shift this to a blue just to show you how it looks in that way so we can shift this down. So let's bring these back to a neutral spot, the hue and saturation. And then let's go and let's bring our gamma down to blue. And then we're gonna bring our gain into the blue a little bit, the magenta, the blue. And we see, of course, his skin is looking really blue. So let's change that. And we're gonna start playing it with again. So we're gonna bring up saturation. And we already see it's starting to become a little bit pink. It's starting to become a little bit pink. And so we can bring that there. Let's see how that modifies anything. Then we're gonna go back to hue and see if we even need to change anything with hue. Hue versus hue. I think let's plop it down a little bit, ever so slightly. And that's already starting to look quite good. So look at that before and look at that after. This one's a little bit better to see. And this one you can visualize a little bit better. But look at that before and look at that after. But you can see that it still has a nice blend. If you look at the shadows, the shadows stay very consistent with the background. And the whole image looks very consistent with the background and his surrounding. But the skin looks very, very neutral while still having that undertone of that bluish hue. So this is just a quick tip on a different way that you can edit skin tones and bring out your skin tones from your color grade and make them look pleasing. So let me know what you think about this tip down in the description below and make sure to tune in tomorrow for another quick tips video.